All right, once I have that shoe off, I can look down at the hoof head, at the hairline, and I'm going to evaluate how that hairline is, and I can see on the outside toe quarter that there's a greater distance between the floor and the hairline. I'm going to take that into consideration when I'm trimming the hoof. Again, I'm also looking at the wear on the horse's shoe, just where the wear patterns are. I'm going to take that into consideration when I'm applying his new shoes. And when I'm trimming the hoof, I need some parameters to go by, just how much I'm going to trim using my bloom forge hoof knife. I'll start at the point of the frog. The hoof knife is held in my palm, the blade towards me. I use my thumb as a driver. I'm keeping his leg in the natural range of motion. I'm just going to trim at the point of the frog until I have uniform tissue texture. It gives me an indication about how much foot I have. If I have to trim a long ways here, it means that there's quite a bit of sole to be taken off. I found this parameter rather quickly, which means that this horse does not have a great deal of sole depth and therefore I should not be trimming a lot with the hoof knife because this is the only protection this horse has against the environment. And using the knife, I'm going to clean the exfoliating sole off. And I work from the inside to the outside. And this is a non-pigmented foot white so that we can see some bruising right in this area. As an eventing horse, he, he works in some pretty rough terrains. All right, I smooth that horse's sole up. I'm going to clean some of the dirt out in the bar area and around the frog and trim with a loop knife. I'll use a full circle loop knife for working around the frog and the collateral sulcus. We can see that there's some bruising back in the bars also. And trimming on each side of the frog and the collateral sulcus, getting that dirt and debris out. I'll trim the central sulcus out just a little bit. This will allow that foot to clean out and not pack with dirt and debris. Once that's done, I'm going to make myself a trail around the boundary of the live sole and the hoof wall. And using nippers, which are the similar form to the pull-offs, but very sharp, I can start at the heel and trim off excess hoof wall. He hasn't got much hoof here, so I'm going to switch and use the rasp. This is a Bellotta razor rasp, and it has a coarse side. It has a fine side. Only cuts going away from the handle. We use the coarse side to do the rough work and then finished off with the smoother side of that file. Letting that rasp glide across that hoof. I'll make a plain surface and take off excess growth. I'll set the foot to the side and view down the hoof to see if I have a plain surface. 
I'll make adjustments with the file at this time. Again, checking it. Try to keep my thumb off of here and just let it drop in a natural range of motion so that I don't alter it with my thumb. Once I've filed that wall, I'm going to remove a little more dirt here and I'm going to recess the sole just a little bit around where the shoe will be resting so that we have no shoe that rests on that sole. to make sure that the distance between the outside of the live sole and the outside of the wall is quite uniform all the way around. And at this point, I might take a measurement so that I have an idea of how wide the shoe should be so that I can save myself trips back and forth from the anvil to the foot. My goal is to have the heels back to a uniform distance to the widest point of the frog. And when I look at this hoof, I, I see all of this bruising. Could be an indication of trauma from below, stepping on a rock. It could also be an indication of trauma from inside, pulling of the impar ligament of the navicular bone or deep digital flexor tendon. Because this horse has a stretched laminae in the toe, and is somewhat broken back. It tells me that there's a lot of stress on the deep digital flexor tendon and or the impar ligament. I'm gonna pick up Brody's foot and just eye down there. I have this foot in the natural range of motion and we can see that he has a deviation here and another deviation down below. What's important to me at this point is breakover. And because he has some deviations, he's not breaking over at the point of the frog or maybe breaking over more on the lateral toe quarter or outside. So it'll be in that direction. So when I'm defining a shoe type that I want to put on, I'll put on a shoe that is altered or manufactured so that he has breakover at the point of which he breaks over. I may also define it by taking it closer to the ground in the natural range of motion and just making a parallel line with the ground, which will help me define that. I'll also use the information that I got watching Brody move down a flat surface to and incorporate that in defining the point of breakover. Okay, big guy. So when I'm trimming, I'm again going to look for a parameter at the point of the frog just a uniform tissue texture and there we have it. We don't want to go be below that depth where we have uniform tissue. I'm just going to tidy up the bottom of this foot. It's not excessively long. I want to leave that protection. That's the only protection this big horse has against the environment, the stones and the debris. I'm going to clean up the collateral sulcus with the loop knife, the central sulcus. And then using the nippers, I'm going to trim off excess hoof wall 
he doesn't have a great deal of growth here. He does have a little extra length on the medial toe quarter. We noted that when the hoof was in a static position on the ground. I'll smooth that up using the rasp. I also have a greater width or thickness of hoof wall on the inside toe quarter. I'm going to adjust that now. And that width is measured from the outside of the live sole to the outside of the wall. You see the distance there is compared to over here. From the solar surface, I'll even that up. That doesn't mean if a quarter is all broken out, I'm going to take everything else out to match it. Normal hoof wall is about three-eighths of an inch thick on most of our saddle horses. We generally use shoes that are have a width of three-quarter inches. That's twice that three-eighths. That leaves the nail holes in the middle of the stock. Check and see if I have it flat. While I have it up here, I'll size the shoe. Again, I have a wider width of web laterally on the outside, a little narrower on the inside. Make sure these heels are back to a uniform distance. All right. Horse does not have a lot of tissue to take off. When I'm working on his limbs, I'm trying to keep them in the natural range of motion. So I've allowed it to drop back. I keep my knees bent. I'm underneath him. I'm not twisting his hock. Cleaning out the collateral sulcus. The central sulcus. All right. Then using the hoof nipper, I'll trim some excess wall in the inside to a quarter. He lands hard and wears hard on the outside of his hoof, so he's going to have some extra length on the inside. Then using my rasp, I'll flatten the solar surface of that hoof. Watching the heels, I take them back to the widest point of that trimmed frog. Check to see that I'm making a flat surface. Make adjustments. Then I'm going to adjust to uniform wall thickness outside of the live sole to the outside of the wall. You can see we have quite a bit more on this quarter, natural. He's flaring to that side because of his conformation. I'll adjust that from the solar surface and then I'll take it forward, put it on the hoof stand and blend down to that parameter that I set on the solar surface. He's got a false quarter here, an old quarter crack. We want to be sure and not put too much pressure on there.
All right. We have the hoof trimmed and we'll go and work the shoes to shape them to the, the horse's hoof. <laughs> 